Welcome back to the channel. We are now working on the suspension on the Miata. At the track the last time I noticed a clunking and bottoming out. So we've rolled the fenders and I've replaced all the bushings on this side with energy suspension bushings. Here's half a kit here. We're gonna be putting the other half in later today. But I just wanted to go over what we got going on back here. So you can see the new subframe. It's uh, out of an NA8. So that way I can add the bracing because this is a 90 and it's got now a torsion diff in the rear and you can see I'm upgrading the brakes. We're going to put G-locks around. But today we're talking about the suspension. I'm going to show you how to do control arms. Also notice the shock is out. Inspecting this vehicle, it's got the standard spec me out of suspension. See what's missing? Yeah, that's right. There's no bump stops on this car at all. So I ordered some of those. I also ordered ex uh, extended rear top hats from uh, Goodwin. So we'll do a video on how to put those in, but that's why that's out. So I think everyone here knows how to take apart the suspension. If not, I'm not gonna do that here on camera just because as you can see, I've got a bunch of other stuff missing. It wouldn't be a really good how-to video, but I'm gonna get the control arms out and on the work area here. And we're gonna show you how to get these out using my favorite tool, the torch. I know I've seen videos of them being spread out, but if you look at the ground control instructions, they'll actually tell you to heat them lightly and press them out. So I'll show you how to do that here momentarily. All right, so once you fight getting this all apart, this is what you're gonna replace. Now, this is exactly what's happening on the other side. That, uh, that's not supposed to rotate. I can push that out by hand. See, that's not good. You should not be able to remove your hub pushing by hand so that might explain the looseness i felt <laughs> on the track so that one's done you just want to clean it up and then for these you just want to apply a little bit of heat and then press them out so let's do the upper get that one ready and then we'll do the lower because that one's got four we're back at the vice here where i'm working on the upper control arm notice the shop door is open for ventilation these rubber bushings can give off some toxic fumes so be sure to have a fresh air source available process is very simple. Apply some heat via the torch evenly to the outside of the control arm. You'll see a bit of smoke and then it's time to remove. I'm using an impact hammer here to push them out with a bit. So there you have it. Driven right out. Now I'll just clean it up a little bit and you're ready to install. So I'm going to get the next one set up. Here you can see me applying heat into the upper control arm. The uppers will take a little more heat than the lowers to get loosened up. But once it's ready, you'll be able to drive those control arm bushings out with an air hammer. This process can take a few minutes here, so take your time and keep applying heat until they will loosen up with the air hammer as you see here. Only apply enough heat to get them loose and out. The next day. Once your bushings are all removed, you want to clean all the rubber out and then clean the holes. You want to get it as clean as you can. And then I typically lay this out so I know exactly what I'm working on. So for example, this is the upper control arm with the appropriate bushings. That's the hub. This is the outer of the lower. This is the inner of the lower. And on these instructions here, they give you the bearing, the bushing position and the sleeve part number and dimensions here and then these just have the numbers smashed on them so it's really not that difficult now you want to use lube they give you enough lube and on these rears they give you two of these so pretty much one per side and you won't want to lube anywhere the rubber touches metal so for example you want to go all around this side i put a little bit on the inside the outside face where it rubs against the uh diff cradle and then I usually just lube the bushing sleeve on the outside when I push it in and I normally just assemble these by hand so you don't need to see me how to do that but I'll uh, we'll do that here so after a few minutes you should be about here empty tub that one assembled just fine that one assembled just fine these are pretty close 
and these got a ways to go. So what I'll do is I'll just put it in the vise with the cloth in there and just gently squeeze these bushings together to make sure everything gets centered up. And then when I go to put it on the car, I'll put a light smear around the outsides and assemble for instructions. Do pay attention to this here, that they give you the threaded rod direction because the washers are different diameters. So they'll slip on one way but not the other. You can see there are two different hole sizes here for your big rod that goes through there. And I'd suggest a little bit of lube on that as well. Hub rides in the middle and you get a little rusted. So that's it. I'm just gonna push these together here. You know how to do that in a vise. You could probably also do it by hand or use a C-clamp so you don't have a vise. Fortunate enough to have a vise, so I do that. And then just reinstall it back on the car. So we'll get that done. So there you have it. Back together, loosely installed. I'm gonna leave it like this for now because I need to get my extended top hats back and reassemble the rear coilover setup. Because there's, as a reminder, there's no bump stops. So we're gonna throw these in there as well, a little thrust bearing, torsion bearing setup, just on the bottom here. And we'll put the extended top hats on the back. In the front, we're just gonna put bump stops in these as well. So. Next video will most likely be the fronts or I'll do the mega squirt. Not sure which one I'll upload next, but hopefully you found that informative. Again, it's very easy. You could do it with hand tools. You don't need the map torch. You can press them out. Energy suspension does though recommend using some heat. Thanks for tuning in. Here are a few photos I took of the job. If you find this useful, please click like and subscribe and follow along the build. Have a great day.